The second video was going to be prior to painting, but it was raining yesterday and you can't very well put a vehicle out in the rain before you're going to paint it. And I needed to get it done to move on to other things. So uh, here it is, painted now. Uh, just to give you an idea why it costs so much to paint things these days compared to uh, you know 20 or 30 years ago. This two-stage paint, which is a base coat and then clear over top of it, um, it's, it's often very expensive, but uh, the most expensive thing is the labor to prepare it because all the trim, uh, like you can't mask anything, is what I'm trying to say. Um, the old days you just masked off the, the chrome and all that, the windows, the rubbers, but you can't do that anymore. You can't have an edge exposed to the weather because it'll peel. The ad adhesion uh, properties of the clear coat is very poor. So uh, as an example, I'll, I'll just walk quickly around the whole truck and show you what had to come off. The grill, turn signals, um, license plate didn't have to come off just made a nicer job and it's not that hard to take them out side of the fender of course the emblems on both sides windshield wipers the uh, washer nozzles the antenna uh, all that stuff had to be raised away from the body the doors had to come apart and the handles were okay big gap there but the um, the door lock tape from the inside so the overspray doesn't go in the door and get on the glass and everything. The glass was dropped and then all the rubber around the window was removed. The mirrors of course were removed. The windshield's going to be replaced so all I did was cut the rubber off the edge. So uh, there's no molding on there now so when the new glass is put in it'll have a new molding. The back glass didn't have to come out. I put a rope under the edge which holds the rubber away from the body so that the paint goes underneath. Now I'll pull the rope out and it'll uh, settle back against the body. The steps on the side here. Mud flaps, all four had to come out. Tail lights had to come out. Emblem on the tailgate. Back bumper. Now the back bumper is painted and uh, that's where Mazda really fell down on this. Uh, this is a Ranger and for those who don't know, since 1998 uh, Mazda has made these trucks for Ford. And it's a very, very good truck. Uh, tight, quiet, reasonably good on gas, little bit of power, it's not bad. And uh, you know, they haven't fallen down in too many areas here. One was the back bumper. They put some kind of a special coating on it before they painted it and it just attracted water. So uh, the surface rust was severe on the back bumper, the painted area, which is right over here. So I took it off the car, ground all the rust off it and painted it properly so it should be fine this time. And I painted the grill as well, its body color. So I painted it out of the car. And then there's all the, the trim on the top of the box. Uh, you got the um, top uh, edges of the box liner. And the gas filler. Just masked out the, uh, the cap. And of course the wheels were covered when it was inside being painted. So you can see all the areas that was damaged uh, from the first video, the roof. pretty nice now and this fender over here was really bad uh, it was hit on the front corner and the back was hanging way out from the body so that's all taken care of so that's about it the, the third and last video I'll do in a few days will be after the windshield is in and all the trim is back on and the pin striping is back on and uh, you can all see a finished product and as it turns out, I'm going to be selling this truck next week because uh, it's injected and I have an intake system that I've developed for older cars, I guess, because it only works on carburetors. Uh, there is a big market for it and eventually I will adapt it to the injected ones, but right now I need a vehicle to display it on, so I've got to get a carbureted 
truck, uh, preferably a truck, so I can keep these plates. So anyhow, until the next video, and that'll be coming very shortly.